Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, Night Shift Emergency Physician, Burnout Thriver, and Wellness Champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Hey, it's Dr. G. Did you know that you can find me on Instagram? Two places. Absolutely amazing. Look for me at Charmaine Gregory, MD, and Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Hello, hello, hello. Fearless Freedom Tribe, how are you doing? Oh my gosh. We've had a series of really powerful live episodes, and today is going to be no different. Um, We had that crazy, amazing panel last week. And this week we have none other than Dr. Caroline uh, Charisme. And she is good. Clemisme. And Clarisme. I'm going to phonetically get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it phonetically. Um, And she is here and she is going to tell you all about herself and what she is up to because she's up to a lot. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Just making sure. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, yes, I am Dr. Caroline Clarice May. I am a general dentist in Manchester, New Hampshire. I graduated from Tufts in 2011. And just to give you guys a little background, it's funny. Sometimes we just get some years that we just remember. I still remember 2011, which which was my graduation year from Tufts. And as part of the graduation process, we have to meet with financial advisor. And I remember we still had to do that. We had, I think they call it an exit counseling, something like uh-huh. that. So uh-huh. I still remember I met with the financial advisor. So look, let me go back. Let me go back. I, so Tufts had just gone to a gorgeous, gorgeous vertical expansion. And I still remember going to the, um, I went on the nice elevator, brand new elevator. I was like, this is nice. And then um, and I got off the, the nice floor. I think it was on the 14th floor. I don't remember. It was up, up, up. And then got up the elevator and then I turned left. It's like I remember every detail. And I remember I turned right and there was a nice glass door. I went through this door, the door, to the glass door. And then I met um, the financial advisor. I went to her office that was on the left. So, so the process, the, the reason for the exit counseling is just... Um, to explain to the students that we understand that we have an obligation or responsibility to pay the debt and stuff like that. But I was like all excited. I was like, oh, I'm almost a doctor. I'm so excited. So I went on. I was like, oh, happy. Yes, show me the number. I'm good. So she started showing me the numbers, you know, a few paperwork. Um, and then at some point, I remember she showed me $520,000, which would be how much I would have to pay. Exactly. Oh, which would be, okay. which would be how much? Yes. $520,000, which would, which is the amount that I would have to pay if I were to take 25 years to pay off my debt. And I don't remember anything else. Dr. G, I have no idea what she said after that. Oh I just remember how I felt. I just remember I felt angry, confused, anxious, and a little bit bitter. And the reason why I was bitter is that I had my classmates telling me they already had jobs in private practices and i'm like wait where where do i apply what i still don't have anything like what am i supposed to be doing and to add to that and that's the thing too you know a lot of people they have the perception of the lifestyle that a doctor should have you know so to add to that one time i go to church and probably probably like a few sundays after that and you know there's always that lady at church that's kind of like loud and stuff like that but anyway so she's like, so Caroline, how come you're driving a, or you're still driving a Honda Civic, a brand, uh, uh, an old Honda Civic? You should be driving a brand new BMW. Oh, but no. But again, what, <laughs> <laughs> what she didn't understand is that I had $250,000 in student loans and I had no guidance as far as how to pay it up and even understand the interest rates associated with that. So I did what most doctors do. I hired a financial advisor, you know? And, but months later, here I am with interest, still accruing my student loans. 
the balance of my student loans going up, which made no sense. I had a whole life insurance that I wasn't even sure that I should have or not. And I'm looking around me like my friends, they're driving expensive luxury cars and other people struggling. And I'm like, there has to be an end to this. This doesn't make sense. And here I am like shopping or whatever. I'm like stressed. I'm like, gosh, I hope the card goes to, I hope the God goes to. I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is not the life of a doctor. And I made a decision. I'm going to become debt free. In four years, I was able to pay off $250,000 in student loans. And awesome. now that is a thing of the past, pretty much. And I have financial freedom, peace of mind, and it's the best thing ever. And the, again, the thing that I love the most is that I get to help doctors do the same. So, and doctors that I have worked with, they are saying that, oh, I paid 11 credit cards in two months. Um, I paid off $40,000 of student loans in during the pandemic. I paid off $167,000 of student loans in two years, you know, and the stories keep coming and coming. I'm so happy to be helping so many doctors. And that's why I founded Doctors Out of Debt to be able to help more doctors get out of debt and create generational wealth. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, 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 um, that is something that uh, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of professionals, I mean, um, you know, so you're seeing it uh, in the world of the industry, you know, we yes. see it in the world of medicine. It is something that is very, 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 a little bit worrisome, actually, because mm -hmm. what, and, 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 and I don't know, you could speak about how this affects your decisions in dentistry, but for mm -hmm. us, what happens is that, you know, there are some specialties that tend not to pay as yes. well. And, yes. you know, sometimes it is, it, and it's, so it's not just the, it's not just the uh, compensation, but it's also the duration of time that it requires mm -hmm. in order for you to get to an to actual training. position where you're mm -hmm. going to be working. And so, you know, if you're in, if you're going to be doing something like pediatrics, which is very critical, right? Because we need our children taken care of in excellent fashion. So if you're going to do something like pediatrics and say you decide that you're going to um, do a specialty within pediatrics. So now you have done the standard, you know, four years of medical school mm -hmm. and then three years of pediatric residency. And then now you're going to do a fellowship, which may be another three years, depending on what kind of fellowship you choose. And you come out and you've done six years of training after medical school. So obviously the place where you're incurring a debt is medical school, right? Mm -hmm. So we're mm -hmm. talking about big numbers like you described. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I went to medical school a really long time ago. So thank God my, my debt level is very low, but, but I'm also older, you know, so, but I mean, now I talk to residents and they tell me, you know, they're coming out and they're owing 300,000, yes. 350,000. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that is just insane. Yes. So now you have somebody who has to make a decision about what they want to do because they can decide to go after their passion which is you know that subspecialty field within pediatrics for example and train for those six years and during that time they're not going to be making a compensation that's going to be amenable to being able to pay down the debt from medical school okay and then when they get completed if they were to compare themselves or compare the compensation to another specialty where it's six years of training postgraduate, it would not necessarily be equal. And so they have to make a decision. Do I want to do this thing because I am passionate about it and realize that I'm not going to be, I'm going to be in a situation where I'm going to be, you know, in deep debt for a long period of time and it's going to be difficult to get out. Or do I want to choose something that is, quote unquote, a little bit more lucrative, which I don't know, in these days in medicine, I don't know if it was truly lucrative, but you know, that's, that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, or make that choice. And so then you, what's happening is you might see a little bit of a ripple effect because now you have people who would have been fantastic in the primary care type mm -hmm. setting, but they're not going into it because they're like, well, I'm not going to stop at this because if I stop at this, my compensation is just not going to be able to make me survive. <laughs> right? And it's not going to be able to allow for me to, if I decide to have a family, uh, provide for my family. Like that's just facts right mm -hmm. and so it's funny when you said that you know the perception like of your um of the church sister where she's kind of like how could you be driving this vehicle yes. you should be you know this is a standard of mm -hmm. person in your particular um profession this should be what you drive but 
is a telling piece of information because that right there just shows the mentality. So if you really look at it, people who are not doctors, okay, people who go to like go to um, uh, go to undergrad and come out or say they, say they don't even get a grad degree, they don't get a master's or something, they just get a bachelor's degree. So they spend four years, they come out, they start working. If they start working, they start you know, doing investments or doing something, you know, they have, they have an opportunity to work yes. for the entire time mm -hmm. and put away money for the entire time that the person who is going to medical school or dental school um, is, is spending yes. in study and starting and incurring debt. They have an op they have an opportunity to build wealth over those years. So we're talking about so we said four for med school, right? Four for dentistry. If you do like maxillofacial surgery or something, we're talking about med school, med school and dental school. So yes. you know, so it could be a protracted amount of time. And so all those years, so you don't have your first job where you actually get a paycheck until you're like in your 30s if you're lucky like i had my if first you're job lucky. Exactly. 30 years old i had my first job at 30 years old mm -hmm. and so you know and i know colleagues who you know basically didn't get done with training until 35 36 mm -hmm. and that's when they're starting their first job meanwhile other colleagues have had you know the opportunity to start building wealth start to do those things you know invest etc cetera, etc cetera, for the 16 years that you were in school mm -hmm. so when the expectation is that you come out of school with a huge amount of debt and ha having a deficit because you haven't had those 16 years of putting money in 401k <laughs> or investing in real estate or whatever it is because most of us don't have that mindset we're all thinking like okay i'm just trying to get through these exams and make sure i know what i'm doing so i don't injure anybody and i do what's best which is do no harm right uh -huh. that's the that's the mentality and so you know people in general just don't understand that they just see the title they see DMD or they see um, DDS or they see, you know, they see MD or DO or whatever those letters are. They just see that and they just assume immediately that you must have the assets that go along with that, which in these days, like early in your career, there are no assets that go along with that. Negative network. Intellectual assets. You have intellectual yes. assets, but you don't have financial assets, right? Actually, your net worth is like so much in a toilet that it's not even funny. That you, know, you who the person who graduates from a four-year college and does a wise, you know, investment over the same amount of years has a greater chance of being a millionaire than a physician or a dentist does. Mm -hmm. And, and they don't believe that, it's, but it's, it's a reality. But people don't understand that. Oh, listen to this. Um, so we have uh, we have someone from um, India, actually, who is on the YouTube yeah. channel, who is watching us live. And he's saying, you know, I am a doctor from India. I'm a USMLE aspirant. Can you tell me the pay scale for doctors in the United States? Wow. So, Hale, that is quite a loaded question because it varies again. And I was kind of alluding to that. It, it varies depending on what you're what you study, what you're going to be doing, um, the communities you're going to be serving. So that is a very wide range. But uh, I would say in general, for generalists, um, it probably be about 90,000 for most most pediatric um, generalists. Um, internal medicine generalist is right around 100, 110 maybe, and I could be lowballing this. I'm not positive. And then on the higher end of things, those that actually spend over a decade post medical school, so like the cardiothoracic surgeons, the um, you know the plastic surgeons, like those individuals um, would be making more. But again, the same thing is the case. They are going to be a longer time that they're not earning anything while they're training. So hopefully that helps you to heal. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's such an interesting uh, phenomenon to see. It's, oh my gosh, it's, but again, what I had learned, Dr. G, is that the purpose of debt is to create wealth. And so through the journey, through those four years, I had to really discover. So I had, I took six-figure debt I need to figure out how to monetize the degree using dentistry and by investing as well. But for me, getting out of debt, I just had to get that out of the way so I can build more wealth, you know? And it's very important for people to understand that, meaning when you go to, and, I'm, and I really, really understand. After you graduate, you just want to go and buy the luxury car, the luxury 
bags or whatever. But think about bringing value to yourself, investing in yourself, because again, the purpose of debt is to create wealth, meaning you should be creating wealth with the debt that you have taken. It's very, very important to understand that, meaning don't go into more debt, don't buy a bunch of liabilities, because what you could do is investing in yourself or invest in several avenues where you can use the profit from that and buy all of the liabilities that you want. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's it, you know, um, well, I was never a person that li I always lived below my means because my mom taught me that. And so it's like, you know, I, uh, we have been very, very, um, very conscientious with the blessings that we have been given, um, myself and my significant other, other. And it's just, you know, but, but I would have to say that what you just said just now is reality for unfortunately way too many people because that is exactly right. You have sacrificed for so long and you have gone without. So that whole delayed gratification mm -hmm. concept not foreign to people who are doing you know advanced degrees i mean regardless of which advanced degree you do i mean i'm not i'm talking we're talking specifically about you know medicine and dentistry but i mean this could also be true for a phd so you know you do a phd and you're you know you're studying for however many years i mean the difference is most times phds particularly in science and um uh the allied uh the uh, stem fields those are usually the they don't have to pay for it like it is you know it is something that is a scholarship essentially um so that's the difference so you know you have a situation where oh yeah um i'll get to that comment in a second um we have a situation where you know the the thought is like everybody wants everything like right now yes. so we're in a we're in a situation where you know we send a text and we expect the response immediately <laughs> like, no matter what time of day you send a text no matter you know where you are you just assume that the person at the other end is going to hear that ping and they're going to immediately respond so we are trained we are trained to be instant gratification like hogs beasts mm -hmm. i don't know like we love it we love instant gratification so now you are talking about individuals who are in a scenario where now it's delayed gratification mm -hmm. you are putting off your 20. for me it was i put off my 20s i basically mm -hmm. like put my 20s on hold and i you know did this thing and then of course you know you get done at 30 and you're starting a job and you're like wow this is like amazing i'm actually getting a paycheck this is <laughs> unbelievable like this is nuts and so you know you have to really have that wherewithal hopefully have the knowledge hopefully have mentors hopefully have people around you that are gonna not reinforce the concept that your church sister was trying to convey which is you should be driving a lexus or you should be driving a bmw no you should be driving your honda because guess what you own that honda i mean i don't know if you did at the time but like i did i have no car payments on that honda so you need to be driving that honda until the thing falls apart why because you need to be putting your money that you're earning living as a resident or living below your means for at least five years you really should like you should live for the first five years after your training you should live as a resident so that you can really knock out the debt if you have a lot of it um and and it could be that it's the debt is related to your education it could be the debt is related to maybe maybe you didn't have to you know take incur a lot of debt during medical school like from the fees and such but maybe you had to like use your um credit cards to survive like maybe there was no like there's no money to buy groceries or there was no money to do the things that came up pay for the exams because those exams are not cheap i mean you got an exam that costs like a grand yep. who has that nobody mm -hmm. has that it's a lot. Oh, so, you know, tips, all yeah. these things, it adds up. And so, um, you know, so is this uh, that mentality is not something that's common. And so, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I don't blame you for, I mean, I don't know, use, don't have a car payment, like for as long as you can. Matter of fact, yeah. when you can't afford it, just don't have a car payment yeah. <laughs> if you can yeah. do that, you know. And I think um, that's how, that's pretty much how I grew up. I don't know if you know, I'm from the Caribbean, I'm from Haiti, and my parents, they just instill those money values, live below your means. It would have one car for like several years. And I mean like decades, that probably like 10, 15 years, the same car, you know? Um, so I think that I kept that in the back of my mind. Like as far as no car payment, you don't need a car payment because that's just paying money towards liabilities, which doesn't make sense. No, absolutely. No, that's some good advice. You had some great parents there. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have um, Dr. Marie. 
Marie Marie, Hi. I know who you are. Hey, girl. <laughs> and so she said, this is great. Thank you both. This family medicine rural deal agrees. I came out of residency <laughs> with 300000 plus in medical school debt at 38 years old. If I had a time machine, I would have made different choices. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. Like, we really do, if we had that time machine and we had that, you know, that retrospective scope and we could go back and tell our younger selves, like, hey, do this differently. I don't know. Maybe not go to, like, a four-year school right away. Like, <laughs> go to community college or, you know, pay for that straight out so you would have less debt in undergrad. I don't know what, but we always will have you know, those things. And so the only thing I would say though, Marie, is I would definitely use that experience and use what you were, what you just, as a matter of fact, you probably just helped somebody by even telling that story because I'm sure that there are individuals who are in that same boat, maybe along the journey somewhere that now they're like, whoa, maybe they're listening to this and they're saying, okay, wait, I need to really think about what I'm doing and the choices I'm making and what I'm taking out and how I'm funding this thing um, because, you know, I'm going to have to pay it back, right? Because yes, exactly. you, you don't think about that when you're a student. You're too busy thinking about making sure that you do a great job as a student. You're not thinking about the finances of it. So thank you for sharing. And that's true, Dr. G. I think sometimes we forget, oh, yeah, I have to pay that. We just keep, because here's the thing. Sometimes they just give you a bunch of money. He, he like, here's 100000 per year because my when I was teaching at BU, my students, that's how much they owed a hundred thousand per year, four hundred thousand dollars for the four years of dental school. Wow. And they just took it. Like here it is, they just took it. Don't take the whole money. Even when they're lending you the whole thing, don't take the whole thing. If you can stay home, like live at home or live with a roommate, don't take the whole money because you have to pay it back. And insurance on top of that. I mean, right now there's zero percent interest until I believe end of September. Uh, but again, we don't know when those interests are going to start accruing again. So it's, they just make everything bad, those interests. They just, oh my gosh. So we have to really think, like we said, we have, so the way I used to, to put in my mind, Dr. G, is, mm -hmm. um, so when I'm taking out a loan, I have to use a salary that I don't even have yet to pay mm. that back. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 here is the kicker. Okay, so this is something that last year taught us, right? Because never ever did we ever imagine, like nobody, nobody could have imagined what would happen last year. Okay, so nobody could have imagined that doctors and dentists would be laid off. Like no. that was never a thought mm -hmm. that entered anybody's mind. And so you just never know. I'm not saying there's going to be another pandemic because I think that is definitely one of a kind. Actually, I hope that is only a once in a lifetime thing. That was and, experience. You know, but you just don't know what can happen. And so, you know, you have everything wrapped up in this without any semblance of well, what happens in the future. Like what? Okay. Here's a scenario that's very feasible. So say you get done with everything. You borrowed all this money. You got done with, with your training, your get out there, you start working and then you have an accident. You're disabled. You're disabled and you can't use your hands and you're a surgeon. You can't use your hands and you're a dentist. Like that's a problem. Your livelihood is embedded in your hands. And so, you know, these are the things that we don't think about when we start the journey. And I mean, I get it. I get it. There's a lot to think about as you start a journey because you have to do all the prerequisites to get into the school. You have to do all the things. I get it. You're focused. But these are some things that as mentors, as people who have gone through it, we should advise the, those that are starting to go through it about because most times you know, there's a rose colored glasses type of mentality surrounding this. And it should really be an educated and calculated decision and not one that's gone into lightly, right? Mm -hmm. Because as we said before, medicine is not the best place if you want to go and make money, right? If that's your goal, don't do this. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you, if your goal is to make a difference in people's lives through the craft, 
then yes, you should do this. And if you decide that you're going to do that, then you should definitely look at all of the potential ways in which you can do it cost effectively, as cost effectively as possible, and also try to maximize your ability to in, like basically pay back the cost of what it, what it took, what the investment was for you to get where you are. So yeah, no, it's, it's not as uh, easy as making the decision. Now, okay, I'm going to be a dentist or I'm going to be a doctor. And then that's it. And give me all the money. Like, I'll take all the money and then I'm going to worry about it later. You have to think steps ahead. It's like, it's, it is a chess game. And in a chess game, you don't think one move ahead. You think multiple moves ahead. Because if you don't, you surely will lose. It's true, though. And the thing with student loans is that, and I know it sounds a little bit negative, but it's either you pay it or you die with it. I Meaning it's not like you can be like, okay, let me go file for bankruptcy or let me just forget about them. It doesn't matter if you are in an accident, those student loans, they're going to keep, or like those student loan servicers, they're going to keep asking for their money every month. And if you refinance your, your student loans to a private bank, they're going to keep asking for the money every month. You know, so that's something very important to understand that um, before taking the six-figure debt or anything. Oh, yeah, indeed, reason. indeed, indeed, indeed. Wow. So you, I mean, you have a pretty incredible story. So you had this epiphany when you went into the counselor's office for that exit interview, and you were like, I ho- I ho- oh, wow, I can't even speak. I owe how much? Half a million dollars. Are you kidding? And then you said to yourself, okay, this right here is not acceptable. And you came up with an action plan. So can you share how that worked because we got that you didn't get a new car like you stuck with the same one like what other like practical things did you do i so that's something else and that i teach the doctors too to have what i call the debt strategy insurance and one thing is to have what i call a cushion money it doesn't matter if you're going so throughout that journey my dad passed away and he was in new york and we had to ship the body in haiti that's not cheap dr j and of course, we all had to come up with the money. And of course, me, me and my mom and my siblings, we had to come up with the money. And that's not cheap. And of course, I was right in the middle of paying off the debt. And of course, and that's the thing too. Debt is something that's very emotional when trying to pay it off. Plus you have, um, and I had the, the stress of the funeral. So that's all that pushed me to be like, okay, I really need to have that cushion money. It doesn't matter if there's death in the family, divorce, a pandemic, you know, always have some kind of money that you can rely on if you're laid off, if you cannot work, if you have maternity leave, it's very, very important. So, and then protect yourself, protect your assets, life insurance, disability insurance, estate planning, all of those things are very important to have. And something else that I did, um, that I recommend that doctors do is refinancing your student loans after the 0% interest free um, on, on the federal student loans, if that goes away, meaning if, let's say like probably next year, if the Biden administration decides that to have the interest back on those federal student loans, definitely think about refinancing your student loans, because that's really what's slowing down. Um, the debt repayment is those interest, because sometimes you can make a payment and then a month you go back and you're like, wait, the balance is higher because those interests keep kicking in. And think about it. If you don't pay those student loans fast, you know, the balance is gonna keep going higher and higher and higher. And it's the same thing if you invest the money in the stock market, you know? So try, and that's how I had to change my mindset. I'm like, wait, so instead of paying my interest towards those student loans, I could be investing and accruing the interest and have my stock, my portfolio getting higher. You know, so that's how I had to change the mindset. So to answer your question too, a change of mindset was necessary because a lot of us, when we see the, neg- the negative network, we have a negative mindset as well. Like, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay that off? I'm always going to be in debt. I'm never going to pay that off. And what's going to happen? You're never going to pay it off. So it's very important to f- change your mindset and see other ways that you could be utilizing utilizing that money towards investments. So that was a big, big, the change of mindset is a big, big deal, big, big deal. Mindset, yeah, mindset is super powerful. And so, um, so if so, say for example, you're talking to somebody who's literally just 
just getting started, right? And so I hear what you're saying about having that, um, you know, they, they always suggest that you have at least three to six months worth of your, you know, expenses kind of saved away. But what about the individual who is literally just getting started mm -hmm. and they don't have that, okay? And so now, now we're saying that you should have a plan to aggressively pay down your student loans mm -hmm. And at the same time, build up that fund, or is the plan to aggressively pay down the student loans and then put a little bit, as little, I mean, as as little as what you can afford, I guess, into that fund, realizing that it's not going to get built up for quite a while. So here's the thing: personal finance is very personal. There is a number in your bank account. Whenever you go below that number, you're going to get very, very uncomfortable. We all have that number. You know, some people, it's like, if I have $1,000, that's not enough. I'm going to start freaking out. If it's 2000 is five, figure out what that number is. But try to at least be able to, and that's the thing. We For for doctors, most of us, I guess I'll call it a luxury that we can find employment easily. As far as in dentistry and medicine, it's a little bit easier. I would say at least for a month or two to have that covered as far as living expenses. Be able to pay. And when I say living expenses, I don't mean... Um, paying for the Tesla. That's not what I mean by living expenses. I mean, your utilities, rent or mortgage, transportation. Again, transportation, I don't mean it has to be a luxury car, you know? Uh, so that's very important. But again, that is so, very, so subjective, I would say, meaning some people it's $1,000, some people it's $2,000. It doesn't have to be a lot of money sitting in a bank account and not doing anything because that's something else. Money in a bank account is not going to make you money, but at the same time, you don't want, you don't want to be have an emergency come and then you're deeper in debt either, you know? Sure. 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 So, you know, so you mentioned, so you, so you, we talked about fear without actually talking about fear. I don't know if you realize that. So when you talked about when you were in that office and you, you know, you made those turns, that left turn, that right turn to the glass door and you sat down in front of that individual and they were telling you those big numbers that like basically, you know, took you aback when you heard them. Um, what was that? So the initial fear, let's talk about that. Cause you, it sounded like that fear that you had was more like, oh my God, I have to pay that back mm -hmm. you no know? and so and so what did you do with that fear so mm -hmm. it sounds like you, you kind of took it and you you did something with it what did you do with yes. it so i think it made me more powerful like meaning i'm not gonna even if i'm fearful i am going to do it afraid i'm still gonna attack the debt and get rid of it because i don't want it to paralyze me because i felt i actually felt paralyzed i've in that office, I was like, you know, sometimes when you feel like the cold sweats, you're like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? That's literally how I felt. And I've been getting fear. But again, I just attacked it. I just, I was like, you know what? I can do this. I'm going to figure this out because there is a way out of it. And that's what I've been teaching the other doctors to do too. And it's the best thing ever. It's so freeing when you just do it afraid. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, I think that we all need to hear stories about how we overcome fear, particularly, I mean, money, finances is a huge subject of fear for a lot of people. And debt by itself is another huge subset of fear underneath the money category. So, you know, having a good action plan, it sounds like, is a great way to move forward and just really, you know, not not letting the fear hold you back, you know? So yes, okay, you have a lot of debt right now. Get We get it, like you have it. Now, what's the next thing? What are you gonna do with that information? Are you going to sacrifice some things for the short term so that you can have, you know, a lifetime of freedom? What are you gonna do, right? So it's a decision point, which I think, you know, standing in fear alone is very different than standing in fear and then taking a step forward, even though you're afraid, which is what it sounds like you did. Mm -hmm. Because now you can have a testimony where you share that, you know, look, in four years, I knocked out $250,000 in debt. And now I did it and I show, I'm showing other people how to do it. And lives are being impacted by this. Yes. Right. Oh, yes. And, and it's not just the individual that you are helping because now it's like a ripple effect. Because mm -hmm. now if you are in a situation where you have given the money back so somebody else can benefit from that money, right? Because student loans are, that's the whole point of the student loan, right? Particularly the ones you get from the government. 
So you borrow money from the government, you get your education, you're able to give back to the society, and then you give the money back. So somebody else can also get risen up. And so that's number one. And then number two is now you have the ability to do more things in your community, right? Because you're not, you're not under the heel of that debt. Because now you have a little more freedom. Maybe you might do things in the community. You might sponsor a baseball team or you might like you might go and do some other things that benefit other people in the community. And so you have a little bit more freedom and you're not as stressed out. And so there's a lot to be said for getting to the place where you have a little bit of uncomfortable times for a short time. But then you have a long time where you're able to help those around you, you're able to create a legacy for your family because you can't save or you can't even put money towards a burial insurance or a long-term care insurance, you know, so otherwise what's going to happen? You pass away or you get terminally ill and then your children are left with the responsibility of caring for you because you didn't put anything away for that. Like, so that's, you know, these are all the things. So there's a huge ripple effect from keeping that debt hold on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, stepping out of it is very freeing, but it's also very beneficial in many, many, many ways. And so, you know, I applaud you for sharing your story and helping other people to step into that greatness because that's, that's huge. It's huge. It's huge to recognize the fear and then doing it afraid. That's huge. And then actually taking action is the biggest thing yes. that is just just amazing so thank you for doing that you're welcome and we do have i do have a community that i definitely would like to invite your listeners to doctors out of there.com forward slash group where they can join the facebook group and talk about debt repayment and wealth building awesome it's, it's awesome, okay awesome. To talk about it. it's okay to talk about debt and wealth building because sometimes i feel that we don't talk about it enough so Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I think, I think in general, there's like a little bit of taboo surrounding mm -hmm. um, finances, and I think that it goes back to mindset, like you described. Mm -hmm. Because how you, the vibrations that you have towards money, basically determine exactly how you live and how you deal with it. Money by itself is not a bad thing because money enables lack of money limits you right i mean we all know that you have no money to buy gas you can't buy gas you have no money to buy food you can't buy food so lack of money does limit you um but having an abundance of money or having in quote unquote enough money empowers you because now like i was saying before you know if you have everything that you need and you want to help something another a cause out for example you want to give money to charity to help so that the community can benefit that is power that's using money in a powerful way right so money by itself is not evil money by itself is not evil it's what you do with, with money it. and how you feel about it and your vibrations around it so if you are somebody who has a, a mindset about money that's very negative guess what's going to happen everything that's bad about money is going to happen to you like yeah. that's just facts i mean these are facts oh trust me i know <laughs> i mean it's, it's so true but if you're if your attitude about money is you know like you know what i'm okay with making money because why if i have more money i could do more things i could do more things for those people around me i could do more things for my family like it's a very different scenario i mean obviously there's and and don't get it twisted like a negative concept towards money can be like that um, that uh, miser type of mentality too, where you're kind of like, I'm just going to make all this money and I'm never going to spend it. Like that's very negative vibration towards money. And ultimately in the end, karma is really, really just. And so it, it shows up, it shows up. So may not in your, your situation, but if you have children, it might show up with your children. So, you know, your vibration around money is very important. So yeah, no, mindset is huge. Awesome. This has been such a great conversation. And so now we're at that point in the show where we will be doing the fill in the blanks. Are you ready? Oh, yes, you yes, ready? yes, yes, yes. Okay, awesome. All right. So the first one is, if I am fearless, I will. If I am fearless, I will change my legacy and keep showing doctors that we all can have financial freedom, 
and build wealth stress-free. Awesome. 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 And then the next one is to me, fearless freedom means. To me, fearless freedom means being myself and using my gift to help others have financial freedom. <laughs> okay. All right. And then last but not least, my battle cry is. Oh, my battle cry is do it afraid. Just do it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. So you want to let everybody know the name of the, the group that you're interested in having them be a part of? Oh, yes. Doctorsoutofdebt.com forward slash group. And we have a pretty fun Facebook um, community there. Or they can just go on the website, doctorsoutofdebt.com. A lot of um, resources there, a lot of info. And if they want to work with me, if they've heard um, the results um, from the doctors that I have worked with, definitely go on doctorsoutofdebt.com um, and click on work with me and I'll get back to you. Awesome. 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 All right. Thank you so much for everyone who joined us live on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And until next time, this is Dr. G. Be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.